no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. In today's show, we're going to break down the latest news and rumors around your Las Vegas Raiders. So we got some things that we want to be able to get into, and why not just get right into the Chucky heads, am I right? The Raiders losing their defensive back coach. I mean, kind of, but not really. But it is for Chucky heads, believe it, baby. So this came out earlier today where Jim O'Neill is going to take a defensive coordinator job at Northwestern and is it really that the Raiders are losing their DB coach no not really because as soon as Gus Bradley was hired to be the DC he brought in some people to basically take Jim O'Neill's job if we're being honest it's an interesting hire I thought for Northwestern but I did just want to keep you guys a little bit updated but I'll just say this Northwestern Good luck because our defensive backs the past two years have been nothing but just an absolute disaster. So, Jim, I will wish you the best of luck, but I am confident that the people that the Raiders have brought in or Gus Bradley brought in are going to be a little bit better. The two names that Bradley brought in as soon as he was hired, the one, Ron Miles. So this is the Raiders defensive back coach. And this, this is a guy who served underneath Bradley with the charge before. He got his first NFL job back in 2000 with the Denver Broncos in He's uh, been with the Chargers for the last seven years. So Ron Miles, he is the defensive backs coach, and he's basically been the DB coach for, well, a week now. Let's go to Richard Smith, who was also brought in by Gus Bradley. He is going to be the linebacking coach, serving underneath Bradley with the Chargers, and has been coaching <laughs> in the NFL since 1968. Or not in the NFL, it's just been a coach, college and NFL since 1968. And I mean... There's not too many coaches that you can find with this much of experience. Plus, the fifth longest active coach in the NFL, six years of a D.C. with the Dolphins, Texans, and the Atlanta Falcons. So that's your DB coach and your linebacker coach. Just wanted to keep you guys up to date. And if you always find yourself trying to stay up to date on the latest Raiders news and rumors, I get it. It's tough. It's the offseason. That's my job. That's what I'm here for. So hit the big red button that says subscribe. That way you don't miss anything. And if you're having a good time and you like these live shows, go ahead, subscribe, because live every single Tuesday, even though it's the off season, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific. All right, let's get into these next stories here around the Las Vegas Raiders. Jason Witten, would he be a good tight end coach? I know I talked about it a little bit yesterday during my podcast episode, if you will, but I'm going to give this one three Chucky heads, and I think that it's pretty likely. The reason why it's not for Chucky Heads, an absolute slam dunk, is this. Just because you are a good player, that does not automatically make you a good coach. Now, as soon as the Raiders decided to, or I guess I shouldn't say move on, as soon as Frank Smith decided to take his talents to the Chargers, that opened up a spot. Now, this job is still wide open. We do not know who the new t tight end coach is going to be for the Raiders, but I do know this. Jason Witten is going to be a free agent in 2021. There was a report out there that if Witten wants the job, it's his. So obviously, you see a report like that, you're like, okay, Jason, do you want the job? Because it's right there. It's right there. You can take it. But my concern is this. There have been other multiple players from the Dallas Cowboys in his old days that actually said Jason Witten wasn't that great of a teammate. He was a little bit selfish. So when you see these numbers here, there is no doubt that Wayne has been one of the greatest tight ends to ever play in the National Football League. You don't put up these type of numbers unless not only are you a great player on the field, but just a great pro overall. The underlying issue that all I'm trying to say is be aware is this. Just because that you are a great player, that does not mean that you are going to be a great coach. Do I think Jason Witten can be a good coach? Yes, I do. Would I be happy if the Raiders ended up hiring him to be the tight end coach? Yes, I absolutely would. But I just can't quite give it for Chucky Heads. I've seen a lot of people out there saying, oh, Mitch, it would be a great hire. It would be a great hire. I agree, but I can't say it's an absolute slam dunk of a hire. So what do we do here at the Raiders Report? We ask you guys these questions. Should the Raiders go out and bring in Jason Witten to be the tight end coach? If you're like, yeah, man, absolutely. I'm sick and tired of you talking. Type H for hire. If you're saying no, let's go with another route. I want you to type P for pass. Something that I hope that none of y'all pass on is having some fun this weekend. I am betting on all the NFL games, and I actually just put my bets down on who's going to win the Super Bowl. If you want to take advantage of this awesome deal I got going on at BetUS, I need you to listen up. Go to chatsports.com slash Raiders. Promo code. Raiders 125, it gets you 125% deposit bonus. If anybody out there 
can find a better deposit bonus deal, I will personally give you a follow back on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. You know why? Because it just doesn't exist. There's not a better one out there. So how about this? Not only am I hooking you up with a deal, I'm going to give you the bets that I'm betting on. Is that right? I'm giving you the picks, I guess, for this week. I'm taking the Packers to cover their three-and-a-half spread over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In terms of the over-under, life's too short to bet the under, right? Right? So give me the over for the Packers and the Buccaneers game. Give me the Bills to cover plus three against the Kansas City Chiefs. I actually have them outright winning that game. And then KC versus Buffalo. I know I just said <laughs> life's too short. But I'm going to go under here. I'm not 100% sure if Patrick Mahomes is going to be 100% healthy. Plus, that Buffalo offense was really slowed down by Baltimore. Only put up 10 points against the Ravens. So give me the under in a game that I think a lot of people are going to bet the over. Now, how about this? I also told you Super Bowl odds. We got them. If you want to go bet on who's going to win the Super Bowl, these are the latest odds on BetUS. So Chiefs at plus 190. Packers at plus 200. Bills plus 300. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers at plus 400. I'm telling you what right now. If it's Bills and Packers, I automatically win money. And y'all can too. But go ahead, get started. Chatsports.com slash Raiders. Promo code Raiders125. All right, let's get into this story. This is something that, man, I've been talking about now. It seems like for two, three weeks at this point. Nelson Aguilar. Is this guy looking for, to get a contract of four years, $44 million dollars? It's two chucky heads. People are talking. When I saw these numbers thrown out there, I was like, there's no way that Aguilar is going to get this. But right now, there is actually a report, and I saw Vic DeFour put out, that he believes that Aguilar could get Tyrell Williams type of deal. If you don't remember, the Raiders gave Tyrell four years, $44.3 million. And the other report out there is this, that the Raiders, they want to bring back Nelson Aguilar. Now, that doesn't mean that they are going to. It just simply means that they want to. And honestly, if that's the number that Nelson's looking for, well, I'll tell you what I have to think about it in just here a little bit. But look at these numbers here. 2020 stats. Obviously a career year. 47 catches, 839 yards, 8 touchdowns. That average, though, really able to stretch the field here for this offense. The, the part, though, that I really struggle with with this type of money is, I mean, <laughs> in 2019, he had 39 catches, 363 yards, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But how can you honestly ask for $11 million when, honestly, man, you've never had a season over 900 receiving yards? It's absolutely baffling to me. So I, I'm imagining a lot of y'all are going to type your N for no here. Would you give Nelson Aguilar this type of contract? Four years, $44 million. Type Y for yes, or go down in the comments section and type N for no. We got 800 people watching us live right now, and majority of y'all are typing no, which, you know what? I am also going to type my no. So here's the next rumor. Would you go out and pay Nelson Aguilar $11 million a year? No. Tuck rule, tuck that. This is also the anniversary of the tuck rule, tuck that, just so you all know in case you didn't know that. But I get the fact that he's coming off career year. However, there's just there's no flipping way, man that I am going to pay a receiver who has been as inconsistent as Aguilar has been $11 million over four years. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, you're trying to save up money. You want to go best in some defensive players? Yes, go go do that. Cut Tyrell Williams, cut Nelson Aguilar, save all that money, and then go invest. But if for some reason you're like, man, we need a wide receiver why would you pay $11 million to Aguilar when you can go out and get a guy like Allen Robinson? Sure, you're going to cost a lot more at $20 million, but I at least would want a number one wide receiver. Give me Allen Robinson at $20 million, heck, $22 million a year over Nelson Aguilar at just 11. Now, if you guys like a lot of the takes that I have here, obviously I do a lot of more takes on Instagram as well. So I always tell you, hey, hit me up on IG. I'm at MitchellRens365. Talk some Raiders with me. But I also got this. I got a nice, fun little giveaway. And if you go give me a follow on Instagram at MitchellRens365 and you check out my latest IG post, I am hooking up Raider Nation. I've teamed up with somebody. And uh, all you got to do is just follow the instructions and maybe you'll pick a, or maybe you'll be the winner. I believe I'm going to announce the winner next week. So next week during our live Tuesday show. So follow the instructions. I'll put the link in the comments and in the description. But if you want to go win a fun little giveaway, go check it out. It's on my IG.
All right, let's go to this next story here. Corey Littleton, is he going to be better in 2021? Oh, man, I freaking hope so, right? <laughs> um, four Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. The reason, the biggest reason why I think it's four Chucky Heads is because he can't really be much worse than what he was. However, I went back, and I watched a lot of film on Littleton because I was trying to figure out why was he struggling? Why did he ultimately not do very well underneath Paul Gunther? It's kind of simple. He just was so lost in the rest of the Raiders' defense, totally lost. His PFF grade under Paul Gunther, 50.6. That's terrible. I mean, that's one of the worst grades in all of football. However, I was like, hmm, I wonder if he was better once Rod Marinelli took over. And actually, he was a lot, lot better. The film proves it. These numbers prove it here on screen. These were Littleton's PFF grades the final three games. So week 15 versus the Chargers. That's basically like three, four days of preparation and had a t one of his best grades of the year. The next game against the Dolphins, 64.7. That was his third highest grade of the year. And then week 17 against the Denver Broncos, 70.5. That was his second highest grade of the year. So basically, three out of his four best games in all of 2020 came under Rod Marinelli, came without Paul Gunther. It's just more and more evidence that Paul Gunther was a terrible defensive-minded coach, and he had no idea what to do with his talent. It also gives me a little bit more hope also for a guy like LaMarcus Joyner. The last story that we're going to bring up here, and it's not even that much of a story. It's just a freaking fact. Tom Flores, Charles Woodson, they're Hall of Famers. It's for Chucky. You have to believe it, baby. I've been doing this Tom Flores skit for probably two years now, and... Finally, I am confident in saying that he is going to get into the Hall of Fame. And you know what, man? He freaking deserves to be. Flores and John Madden are the only two people to ever win a Super Bowl as a player, assistant coach, and a head coach. Two-time Super Bowl champion, 1981 and 1984, and his record in nine seasons with the Raiders. I mean, 83-53. I mean, you're talking about a guy who not only broke boundaries as a coach in football, also broke boundaries in terms of being the first I believe first Hispanic coach to win a Super Bowl. I mean, like, this man has done so many things that have been so impressive. And if he does not get into the Hall of Fame, I am going to tell you right now, I might march down to Canton myself and just start kicking some ass. The other guy that I obviously, and we all agree, deserves to get into the Hall of Fame, it's Charles Woodson. I mean, these type of numbers are silly. Like, when I was going over the graphics here, I'm like, wait, there, there has to be a, there, this can't be right. He didn't have 65 interceptions. He did. 11 touchdowns. He did. Over 1,200 tackles. Yes, he did. Charles Woodson was one of the best to ever do it, not just at the cornerback position, but also at the safety position. A do-it-all athletic freak, and he is also a friend of Chat Sports and a supporter of our shows as well. So what I want you guys here is just do it. Flores and Woodson, they're Hall of Famers, and if you agree with me, like the video. The only people that I feel like are going to disagree with me are just absolute, complete Chiefs idiots out there or people that don't have a pulse. So check your pulse. Do you have a pulse? Yes. Like the video then because Tom Flores and Woodson are definitely Hall of Famers.